And then, yeah, so thank you for attending the session today. So this is the, the bias session for the web and society track. And we have four, uh, five quite interesting talks. Um, and we're going to start with Hassan Iqbal, who's going to tell us a bit about their investigation into political biases in email spam filtering during the 2020 US election. So Hassan, please take it away. Thank you, Andreas. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on your time zones. So my name is Hassan Iqbal, and today I'm presenting our work, Left or Right, a peek into the political biases in email spam filtering algorithms during US elections 2020. This work was in collaboration with my three esteemed colleagues in the Department of Computer Science at North Carolina State University. So spam filtering algorithms or SFAs are quite commonly used by email service providers. And these SFAs are important for user experience because they restrict unwanted emails from reaching the inbox of the user. Also spam filtering policy is not made public by these service providers for obvious reasons such as exploitation by the spammers. However, there are certain implications. Since SFAs are not public, lack of transparency may add bias in the filtering policy. And if these biases exist, they may affect the political campaign emails by marking more of those campaign emails as spam. For example, there were concerns uh, raised by a GOP congressman about his campaign emails ending up in spam folder. So all of this makes us wonder, are there any biases in the SFAs of email services toward the campaign emails of US elections 2020? In this paper, we answer this question. Now I will dilate on our methodology. Briefly, if we created new email accounts, then we subscribe to the campaign websites. Then we designed two experiments to analyze the data. And lastly, I will talk about the data set. So first of all, for the three email services, Gmail, Outlook, and Yahoo, we created 34 uh, new email accounts. So in total, we had 102 new email accounts. These email accounts comprise of the combination of three demographic features, ethnicity, age, and gender. Then we subscribe these email accounts to the presidential Senate and House candidate website. For presidential candidates, we had Donald Trump and Joe Biden. For Senate, we subscribe to 78 websites in 36 states. And for House, we subscribe to 156 websites in 42 states. The map here on the right shows the distribution of Senate and House candidates that we subscribed across the United States of America. Then we have two experiments. First is baseline experiment in which the new email accounts only receive the campaign emails and we do not perform any interaction with those emails. So the idea to have this experiment is to capture the default filtering behavior of the SFA of the three services. Then we have the interaction experiment where we perform three types of interactions. The first, reading all emails, both in spam and inbox. Second, moving spam emails to inbox. Third, moving inbox emails to spam folder. And for each of the three interactions, we assign new email accounts without any history. So the idea behind this interaction experiment is to see how well the SFAs register the user preferences down the road. So we collected data for 153 days, starting from July 1st, 2020 till November 30th, 2020. And we collected more than 300,000 emails. Our analysis comprised of four key questions. First, do SFAs of email services exhibit aggregate political biases? Second, do SFAs treat similar emails with different political affiliations in the same way? Third, do the interaction of the users with their emails impact political biases of the SFAs? And lastly, do SFAs exhibit different political biases for recipients belonging to different demographics? Let's focus on our first key question, do SFAs of email services exhibit aggregate political biases? To show the aggregate trend, we present the CDF of the spam percentages of the EA received emails. For example, this blue line shows the spam percentage of the left or the Democratic emails. And the red line here shows the same for the right or Republican emails. Now, if you look at this, uh, look at this plot, we see that the Gmail SFA is marking a higher percentage of right email as spam as compared to the left emails. So we can say that for the new email accounts, 
the untrained SFA in Gmail is leaning towards the left. Contrarily, in Outlook and Yahoo, we see that their SFA is marking a higher percentage of left email as spam as compared to the right emails. So for the new email accounts in Outlook and Yahoo, their untrained SFAs are leaning towards the right. So the key takeaway from the aggregate trend is that for the new email accounts, Gmail SFA leans towards the left, whereas Outlook and Yahoo SFAs lean towards the right. Now to our second key question, do SFAs treat similar emails from different political affiliations in the same way? Well, to answer this question in an ideal world, we should have both left and right candidates and same set of emails. And then we compare the spam percentage of those emails. However, this is impractical because candidates do not send the same set of emails. We address this problem by using propensity score matching approach or PSM. So PSM is a popular statistical method in which, which is applied to the observation studies where it is, it is not feasible to conduct randomized control trial. So essentially we divide the data into treatment and control groups, and then we match the two groups based on certain features called covariates. Now let's map our emails problem to PSM. First, we have to assign the treatment and control groups. So the treatment group comprise of those emails which are marked more as spam, that are more disadvantageous. As we saw in the aggregate trend, Gmail was marking higher percentage of right email as spam, so we assign right emails to the treatment group for Gmail. Similarly, for Outlook and Yahoo, we assign left emails to the treatment group because they were marked more as spam. Now, the covariates. So we have two set of covariates. First, our metadata based covariates, where we extract 10 email features, such as content lexicon, number of sentences, number of images, et cetera. And second is content-based covariates, where we divide the content of the email into six categories, and each category has certain topics. For example, category one, political campaign and events has topics such as Trump, make America great again, primary debates, et cetera. Note that we took these categories from a study by a group in Princeton. More details about that study can be found on election emails 2020.org. In this figure, we show the results of PSM. On x-axis, we have the covariates. On y-axis, we have the spam percentage difference. These bars show the results of PSM. And the red and the blue color represents the political affiliation of the treatment group. And the green bar here is the baseline spam percentage different before propensity score matching. Essentially, we are comparing the results of these bars against this green line. So when we look at this uh, figure, we see that the bars are fairly close to the green line overall, which shows that even after PSM, we did not witness any reduction in uh, SFA bias. However, we have an exception here in C1 and C2, where we observed about 17, uh, and 16% reduction in bias. This happened because we observed that Gmail was marking almost all the emails on certain topics as spam. So in category one, these topics were Lindsey Graham in South Carolina. In, topic, in category two, the topic was radical left. However, despite this reduction in bias, the overall spam percentage difference is still above 40%. So the key takeaway from PSM is that SFAs mark campaign emails with similar features of one political affiliation as spam, while do not mark similar emails of other political affiliation as spam. Now to our third key question, do the interaction of the users with their emails impact political biases of the SFAs? So as mentioned earlier, we have three interactions. First, we read all the emails in spam and inbox. Then second interaction is moving all inbox emails to spam folder. And third, moving all spam emails to inbox. To capture the impact of interaction, we compare the results of two experiments. The baseline experiment or E1 gives us the default behavior of the SFA. The interaction experiment or E2 gives us the interaction behavior of the SFA. So when we compare E2 with E1, we get the change in bias or the impact of interaction on the political bias. So first of all, reading all emails. When the user is reading all the emails in spam and inbox, then the spam percentage should decrease because user is showing interest in the content. However, our result shows something different. So we are reading at a daily interval. On x-axis, we have the weeks. 
on left y-axis, we have the spam percentage difference between the interaction experiment E2 and the baseline experiment E1. On the right y-axis, we have the bias index, which is shown in the green color. Basically, the bias index shows the change in bias due to interaction relative to the baseline experiment. If the bias index is less than one, then the bias has decreased because of interaction. If the bias index is equal to one, then the bias stayed the same as the baseline. And if bias index is greater than one, then the bias has actually increased as a result of interaction. When we look at these results, we see in Gmail and Outlook, we observe a slight decrease in the spam percentage as a result of reading. However, the net effect when we compare to the baseline is not that different. Since in Gmail, the bias index is equal to one, the bias remains unchanged after reading. In uh, Outlook, we observed a marginal increase in bias uh, because of this uh, reading experiment. Outlook, however, uh, Yahoo, however, shows a counterintuitive trend. Here we observe increase in spam percentage, whereas decrease in bias. Now this decrease occurred because the increase in right spam percentage was more as compared to the left. Therefore, we observe a slight dip in the bias index. Now to second interaction. If a user is moving all inbox email to spam folder, then the spam percentage should increase essentially because user is showing lack of interest in, in the content received in the inbox. We ran this interaction experiment at the interval of five days. So when we look at this figure, we see that Gmail increased the spam percentage significantly more for the left emails than the right. Therefore, the bias index is below one. So we observe a decrease in the bias as a result of this interaction in Gmail. Outlook shows the similar trend where we observe a decrease in bias because of this interaction. However, Outlook showed a marginal decrease in bias. This shows that the SFA of Outlook is not registering user preference very effectively. Third interaction. Now, if a user is moving all emails from spam folder to inbox, then essentially the spam percentage should decrease because user is interested in the content in the spam folder. So when we look at this uh, figure, we see that Gmail has significantly uh, decreased the spam percentage because of which the bias index is very close to zero. Hence, the bias because of this interaction has significantly decreased for the Gmail SFA. However, in Outlook and Yahoo, we see a counterintuitive trend where the bias index is above one and there's a minor increase in bias. So the key takeaway from the interaction experiment are, first, the reading interaction did not have any significant impact on the political biases of the SFAs of any of the three services. Second, for the inbox to spam folder interaction, the political bias of the SFA in Gmail reduced significantly, moderately in Yahoo, while only marginally in Outlook. For the spam emails to inbox interaction, the political bias of the SFA in Gmail reduced significantly, but increased in both Outlook and Yahoo. However, we did not find any consistent actions that one could recommend to the users to help them reduce the bias. Lastly, our fourth key question. Do SFAs exhibit different political biases for recipients belonging to different demographics? Our analysis show that age group, ethnicity, and gender of the account holder did not have any impact on how SFAs treated the emails. Now I will conclude the discussion with four points. First, bias in the mass group of PSM is worrying. We saw that SFAs are marking emails from one political affiliation more as spam as compared to the other political affiliation. Perhaps political affiliation may influence uh, SFA filtering policy. While we have no reason to believe that there were deliberate attempts from the email service provider to create these biases, the fact remains that their SFAs have learned to mark emails from one political affiliation more as spam than the other political affiliation. Second point, General perception is that uh, the SFA adapts to their user preferences. As we saw in the interaction experiment, this perception holds strongly for Gmail, while to a smaller extent for Outlook and Yahoo. Third, online content may influence voters. An undecided voter may get swayed towards the political affiliation 
whose emails are more received in inbox than spam? Because users are less likely to open their spam folder and mark emails not as spam to make the SFA unbiased. Therefore, it is necessary to have SFAs unbiased at the outset rather than relying on the explicit feedback from the users. Lastly, fairness of spam filtering algorithm is an important but difficult problem. SFAs are important to have a good user experience, but reducing their bias may in turn affect their efficacy. Therefore, it is important that the SFA filtering policy should be given its due attention by the email service providers so that they can develop the mechanism that can reduce these biases while simultaneously ensuring that SFAs are effective in uh, restricting unwanted emails from reaching the inbox of the user. With that, I thank you all for listening and I'm open to questions. Thank you very much. That was precisely on time and a really interesting presentation. Do we have questions from the audience? We have time for a couple. We have one from Pushkan. I think that was he was applauding. I can um, ask. So uh, basically, I want to understand the ethics behind this. So uh, you did some data collection. So how hard was it to basically get the approval of ethics? Those things. Ethics uh, in which context? I mean. Yeah, so you're using uh, like sensitive emails and those things. Right, right. So uh, since we have created new, new email accounts, these email accounts do not belong to any human users. They were all new email accounts. So there was uh, no objection of in terms of ethics. We also sought uh, approval from IRB. So there was no concern about that. And uh, since these campaign emails are public information, you, anyone can subscribe to those emails and receive those emails. So again, there was no restriction as such. Perfect. So I also have a question which relates to the, the initial results that you had that, so the, the initial filtering was quite different for left and, and right leaning um, emails coming in for the different uh, email providers. So do you have any intuition what the reason for this might be? So this is maybe related to the user base that is providing the usual email baseline that is used for training those filters? So uh, since this is a very good question, since we do not have visibility in, into the SFAs, uh, so we can speculate what could have happened. Yeah. And uh, we, uh, since we created new email accounts, we assumed that there should be untrained SFA, which should not have any biases, but there were few biases. It is likely that uh, SFAs have learned from the preferences of large set of users who are out there in the wild, and then started applying these learnings to the users who are new, who are subscribing new. It is likely, but we cannot say this for certainty since we do not have visibility into the SFA. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.